So remember that it now formats content. You no longer have to bother editing the script. Everything is much more simple. And just look at the final output. We have the custom data graphs from Code Interpreter. We have the images. We have internal links. And yeah, if you can believe this, you can make one of these every single minute, meaning that while you are sleeping, you can create 480 articles. So I have updated my GitHub. I do not know how to delete things on GitHub. When I try to delete something, it just doesn't go away for some reason. But I've made a new folder inside the ChatGPT Assistant Autoblogger. So if you go in the description and you find the link to my GitHub, to the ChatGPT Assistant Autoblogger, and just press copy here, and then we'll jump over to Visual Studio Code. Now, if you don't know what you're doing with Python or anything like that, and you've got no idea what Visual Studio Code is, then I'll leave a link to a description showing you how to set up my auto blogging system. If I'm going too fast for you, please slow me down a bit, but I am going to be going pretty quickly in this video. So at the top, go to terminal, new terminal, and we'll just do git clone, paste, and then something one, because I just made a video and I called it something and I'm running out of names. So I need to put a space here. That's what the problem is. And then we'll press open folder. And at the top, we'll see something one. So we'll press select. And then I'm going to delete everything except the simple folder. So I'll delete all that, delete all this, delete this, and then we'll just keep the simple folder. So this is the simple folder. We'll delete these visualizations as well. You don't have to because it just goes over them anyway. Now, what has changed? I have added a config.json um, folder or file. And what this does is it allows you to use this tool without even looking inside format, uh, in, inside simple mode.py, which is the actual script that we are going to be running. And as you can see, it's pretty long, it's pretty complicated. And if you don't know what you're doing, you're just going to get confused. So instead, what I've done is I've created a config.json file. So you just highlight between the two uh, inverted commas or speech marks, and then just paste your open API key. Do the same with free image host API key. You can get that by just going to free image dot host and then just type API afterwards. Click on the API. I think everyone's API key is the same anyway. So you can just copy this and put it here. Perplexity. I don't know how to make things optional. So for now, if you don't want to use it, perplexity, I don't know what to suggest, but I do recommend using perplexity, especially if you want to write about things that happened recently or things that have updated or whatever it might be. And then obviously your business name. So I can put two men here and then um, page type. So instead of just doing blog posts or service pages or whatever, each in each script, now this one script can do anything. And the way this works, by the way, if you're curious, is it will take this page type as a variable. So if I do control F and do page type, you'll see use this as a guide to shape the final config page type. So instead of saying final article or final service page or final whatever, now instead you can write literally anything here. Okay. So you, you don't, don't feel like there's any restrictions here because it actually just takes into account the words you're using. So you could say service page or location page, and the end result will be different depending on what you put here, okay? I'll show you uh, my inputs in a second. So business type, uh, just like e-commerce store or whatever you're doing. So it will know whether you're writing about products or not. So you could put for example, um, HVAC service, local HVAC service would be a good one. And then it says path to links file. So we'll see here on the left, we have brand images and links.txt. I'll show you how to fill this in in a moment. But for now, you can right click, copy relative path, paste it, and then you can remove the uh, simple part because it's not, it's not actually needed. And then path to example file, we'll put example.txt here. Path to content plan, we'll put keywords.csv here. And path to website images, we'll put um, we'll put images.txt here. By the way, there isn't an images.txt in the GitHub, so just right click and new file and then just add images.txt. 
And then we will add images dot text here. This was a new thing because it was messing up a little bit and I wanted to have a bit more um, where it works every single time. Consistency, like I really, really think consistency is important. Language here, so you can put American English or British English or whatever. And then country here, United States. And then tone, we'll put professional. So I'm just going to fill in the rest of these real quick. Okay, so we have the rest of this information filled in now. So we've got the open API key, the free image host key, the perplexity API key, business name, page type, and et cetera, et cetera. Now, another thing that I've changed is the content plan because I was getting really, really annoyed with how it was working. So I've very much simplified the process. And all you need to do now is just go on ChatGPT and say something like, uh, look at uh, two men dot it and understand what the website does. So I'm going to allow ChatGPT to discover this for itself. And then once it's done like a summary of what it does, first of all, one thing you can do is you can grab this and you can put it inside brand, brand images and links dot text like that. And then we're going to say, give me five keywords for this niche to help me rank. Now, you don't have to do it like this. You can use Google Ads Keyword Planner. You can do whatever you want, to be honest with you. But uh, just because I'm making an example, let's just do these five. So we'll, we'll do keywords.csv, control V, control S to save. Now we need to start adding images and things. I've also included extract images.py. What this does is it reads your sitemap and it gives you some random products. So this is a config at the bottom here. I, I need to add this to the GitHub quickly. I forgot to add it. So at the bottom, it says sitemap. And what we can do is we can go to twomen.it slash sitemap.xml. And we can grab the first one, which is the products. Oops. And right click here and then save as, and then save and then drag this across to here. And then we can copy relative path. Go to config.json, click inside here, control V and get rid of the first part and control S. So now in order to get our products, we can do terminal, new terminal, Python, and then extract images. I'm not inside the right folder, so CD simple. Uh, Python extract images.py. Grab all of these images like this by going from the bottom and dragging it all the way to the top like that. Control C, and then put that inside images.txt and save that. Now we need to get our internal links. So again, we'll go to the sitemap. I like to use collections. If you're on WordPress, by the way, this is all possible as well. I'll leave a link to a plugin uh, in the description of this video. What you can do with this plugin is you can generate an XML sitemap uh, with all of your images and all of your links in there. What you can do is you can put your the, the same information in brand images and links and also in images.txt. It doesn't matter. You can just put the same thing in there. So once you do the export using this tool, just put the same information in both of these and the script will work. But if we're on, uh, if you're on something like Shopify instead, what you can do is you can use something called sitemap to clipboard. And this is a Chrome extension. So add this Chrome extension and then click here and then press start. And then we can paste like that. And that is our internal links. So we'll say internal links like this. Remember, this is a text file that ChatGPT is going to be reading. So we can write things here as well. And ChatGPT will read them, which is quite an interesting part of this as well. We have example.txt. What you can do is if you're, for example, creating a service location based page for an HVAC company, create one and then put that content inside example.txt, okay? Make sure you put a lot of effort in, make sure you put a lot of nice imagery and everything in there, and then use that as the example. Okay, so we should be pretty much there now. We have our images, we have our internal links, we have our example, and we have our keywords. 
So now what we're going to do is Python simple mode.py. And I've done a lot of different things to make the script more efficient as well. So instead of taking five to seven minutes for one blog post, it now takes about a minute and they all run at the same time. Uh, it still does take five minutes to finish the process though. So it's about a minute for a blog post now that I've uh, optimized everything. Another thing that, I will, that I've done that we'll talk about when the script is finished, because I want to show you the outputs as well here, is I've added format.py. What this does is it takes the OpenAI Assistance API response, which has very strange formatting, and it automatically turns them into already formatted articles. Another thing you could do if you wanted is you could change format.py to output in HTML. What this would do is it would make automatic uploading to uh, WordPress even easier. So you could add something here that just says, uh, please format this article and output in HTML if you wanted. Um, I just prefer Markdown because we're, we're still not really automating the upload process uh, for clients. So I, I, I don't need automation on that just yet, but I mean, a lot of people are asking me, so I will eventually get around to it. Something else I will be adding to the script as well is featured image generation eventually. Um, and that will also come with the WordPress automation. They're kind of linked, um, or sorry, the, the automated uploading process. So this is what I really, really like about this specific tool that I've made. I mean, look at that. That's just a really, really nice graph. Metallics and denim, retro chic. It's so cool. It's so interesting that it can just make these visualizations. One thing I should mention is that still, as of now, the script does have this error code 400. Um, ensure this value has at most 32,768 characters. What that means is that the OpenAI API doesn't allow messages with more than 32,000 um, characters, which means unfortunately, until I fix this, there will be some failed articles. But generally speaking, it should generate content. Okay, so without faking anything, without checking the content beforehand, let's talk about what the next part is. We're going to be using format.py. The problem is format.py uses an older version of OpenAI. So if I do Python format.py, it's going to give me this error that says I need to do pip install OpenAI 0.28. Now I know this is a little bit inconvenient, but this is just the best way I've found to do it. I found that the older version of OpenAI is much better at doing things like formatting or writing 1000 guest posts in Python or whatever it might be or translation. So now when we do Python format.py, what it'll do is it will take the processed underscore keywords dot CSV file and it will turn it into a formatted articles concurrently dot CSV file. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can then get the markdown format and or HTML format. Like I said before, if you want to use some kind of auto upload. Okay, that took maybe, oh, it says right here, it took 32 seconds. I was going to say 20 seconds. So what you want to do now is go to sheets.new, click on file, click on import, click on upload, right click uh, formatted articles concurrently, click reveal in Explorer, drag this across to Google Sheets, wait for a couple of seconds, click import data. Like I said before, I don't know if this content is going to have, uh, I'm doing this live basically. So it, they, there could be some mistakes here, but I think overall it should work. And I have got it to the point that this is super, super consistent. Okay. So we're going to click on this little corner here and I'm going to make all of these the same size and I'm going to do format wrapping wrap. It looks like three of them or two of them failed. Sorry. That's okay. I mean, it normally fails more at the beginning as well. I'm not really sure why. So we're going to click in here, control C and we'll go to mark, mark down to html.com, control A, control V. And we need to get rid of this little, the, these commas at the beginning, the invert commas. And we can see we have custom images 
we have product images, as you can see here, and we should have internal links as well. Cesare Attilini has a link to Cesare Attilini, another one to Cesare Attilini, a link to KNT by Kiton, and a link to Kiton. So this basically is the kind of content that we would create normally on ChatGPT anyway, but it's a fully automated, fully customizable, personalized system, and it's free. The only people who have been getting annoyed with me are developers. If you're a developer and you're watching this video and you're thinking, F this guy because he's a noob and he's, you know, claiming this script is amazing. All I'm saying is this is really, really good for me and also for other people because they can now automate this kind of content about their business and about their website specifically without paying for any expensive tools. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're watching till the end, you're an absolute legend. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you more. I'll see you real soon with some more updates on this script. Peace out.